So I want to talk about an interesting circuit now where we talk about um, voltage sources and capacitors in this sort of interesting circuit. Now there's no dependent sources, so it's just a simple, well, it would appear to be a simple circuit, but and yet we have three different sources, multiple different capacitors. How do we want to approach this? Well, you might imagine if you had this as a resistive circuit, one of the things you might think about doing is using superposition in such a case. It turns out with capacitors you could do the same thing. There's nothing that would keep you from that situation. In fact, if you took a case where I took V1 as a voltage source and had V2 and V3 off, I would have a circuit that looks something very much like this, where of course C2, C3, and C4 are all in parallel. This works out fairly well, and in fact, you get a very straightforward capacitive voltage divider of C1 over the ratio of things, and so you can see that sort of ratio of things happening there. And then there's an offset because, again, we don't know how the charge is going to play in that, si in that situation. Similarly, I could look at it through C2, and I would get a very similar structure here, C2 on going into it, and then C1, C3, C4. Notice, again, it's C2 over now all of the capacitors plus an offset. Same thing for C3, and so you can kind of see there's a superposition principle going on here. Uh, interestingly enough, this, the offset, you can argue, is the same thing, because if you look at it closely, if I turn V1 to 0 and V2 to 0 in this case and V3 to 0 in this case, I have the same circuit, uh, which is, you know, again, sort of the same sort of thing, but one very single point that's true for all of them. So it turns out that not only are the offsets would be all the same, but then I could actually talk about the measures actually having this sort of function, which is C1 normalized by all the variables, C2 normalized by them, and C3. You think this is great. Um, this should work out pretty well as we put all this together. Okay. So then you can actually evaluate it. And notice if I take C1 as sort of 4 picofarads, notice the sum of these is 8. So that makes this a little bit easier in terms of, so it's 8 picofarads sum. 4 over that, the ratio gives me a half. If I look at it for C2, the ratio is a, is a quarter. And for C3, the ratio is 1 eighth. And so I can imagine having this kind of a structure. So you could imagine, say, if I had V1, V2, and V3 at 2 volts, that would give me, well, this would turn out to be 1, this would be a half, and this would be a quarter. So I get 1.175. And if this was a resistor divider, I'd pretty much be done, right? If these were just, capac if these were just conductances. But these are capacitors, so the one thing I still have to worry about is what is the offset, which is due to what is the overall charge there. But notice I was given this initial condition that the measurement voltage here is half a volt when all of these are at ground. In other words, I know the offset voltage. I know it very directly. So as a result, I know the offset voltage is half a volt. So I had half a volt to that 1.75 volts and I get 2.25 volts. So it kind of gives you a way to look at this, and at first you might think, oh, the capacitors make this a little more complicated, but other than dealing with the charge, and if you're familiar with the capacitive voltage divider circuits, this really is not any more difficult than any other sort of resistive type of circuit you might be working with.